Ho ho, me hearties! A very, very good morning to you and a very warm welcome to Scotty McClue's live stream for this Friday morning. 10 o'clock sharp, nothing gets past me, of course. And welcome, welcome, welcome. You're watching Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster and the first lord of the internet. So much to talk about this morning, so little time to do it in. So I hope you've all set your notifications and that you're ready for our last live stream of the week. For the big one, Scotty McClure, the world's top broadcaster and the first lord of the internet and the world's most humble man. So three fabulous titles right away for you. The wonderful Gordon Rich is watching. Good morning, Gordon. Lovely to have you with us. And of course, dinky do to you. Tell ten to tell ten to tell ten to tell ten. Dinky do, Scotty, says Jack. Good morning, Jack. Lovely to have you with us. Martin Nogge. Dinky do, Mr. McClue. Dinky do, Martin. And a very, very warm welcome. We'll do a lot of sharing from the off and tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue live streaming just for you to say dinky do. Uh, Kevin Roberts is watching. Dinky do, Scotty. Howdy, says the wonderful Nikki Graham. Hello, Nikki and dinky do. Lovely to have you with us. And of course, a very, very big welcome to our Friday morning pop-up. It's a random pop-up, so I couldn't really tell you exactly what we'll be talking about, and um, neither could you. And, uh, of course, the important thing about that, there's Elliot Boyce. Thank you, Elliot. Lovely to have you with us. Hi, Scotty, from Gordon in County Kildare, originally from Scotland. We love County Kildare, and we say hello to Ireland, Gordon. Welcome, welcome. Hello to the Emerald Isle. So they are, it's Kildare, not big um, horse racing and all that sort of thing. There we are. Do tell. I mean, tell us more because this is a big knowledge program and we like to get knowledge and information. Ian Kerr's watching. Good morning, Ian. Kevin Stewart has joined us. Welcome, Kevin. Lovely to have you with us. Kareem Zakaria. Dinky do. Lovely to have you with us, Kareem. Good morning, Scotty. I've just beamed you. Uh, on the big TV on Chromecast. You must tell me how you do that. I do have a, an FST, but, uh, you know, you must tell me how to do that. Hello, Scott McClure, says Kevin Stewart. Good morning, Kevin Stewart, our resident genius. Lovely to have you with us, and welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, who else have we got here? Eddie D is watching. Come and join us, Eddie. Lovely to have you with us, Dinky Doo from Scotty McClure, the world's top broadcaster, the first lord of the internet, and the world's most humble man. Three top titles for you right away. Dinky Doo, I say. The wonderful Paul Francis Carroll is watching. Thank you, Paul. It's always a great privilege to have you with us on the live stream. Paul Francis Carroll is perhaps the finest organist in the world. Outstanding organist. There we are. Mind you, I'm pretty smart myself, you know, when I get going on the old uh, foot pistons. Ali Yule's watching Dinky Doo. Ali, lovely to have you with us. Kevin Stewart. Welcome, Kevin, for the chit chat. This just in. So there we are. Um, what about this one? The King of Spain has quarantined his jet. Madrid News reports that the reign of Spain is staying mainly on the plane. We love it, Kevin. I thank you. A tee hee to start the day. James Dundas is watching, Eddie D's watching, Dinky Doo, lovely to have you with us, Eddie, tell 10 to tell 10, the lovely Susan Forrest watching in Lancashire, she's a lassie from Lancashire, Alistair Bajack and David Harry, good morning Scotty, now guys I'm going to start sharing from the off because that lets people know we're on. I want these figures up, 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 up. A couple of thousand joined us yesterday, so that's quite good for starters. There we are, but we had um, 6,000 last week. So uh, 6,000 was it for the Friday show last week, and I thought, no, that's good. That's great, because you can have the finest program in the world, and I would challenge anybody to say this is not, and um, unless everyone knows it's on, you know, where are you, I say? 
So there we are. What would be the point? Um, what I believe in is I think that right now at the moment, people are needing a wee cheery uppy. And uh, I would like to think that uh, collectively we can all manage that. Swell to great, says Paul Francis Carroll. Yes, or what about solo to choir? Is there such a is there such a stop as solo to choir, or would you just do that? So there you are. You certainly can swell to great, and my goodness, you and uh, I can swell to great on the organs. Scotty, if you could rewind life, what decade would you go to? It's so difficult because you'll laugh at this and you can laugh your head off all day. I don't mind. I've definitely been here before. I may have been here before several times. And no area of history particularly panics me if I've been in that. And I'll show, I shall tell you for why. I've visited great country houses and I've known my way around right away. And I thought, I've been here before. Now, do you remember us talking about this? Sometimes you'd look at a wee one, a wee baby or something, and they would look back at you with wisdom in their eyes. And, you know, I, I turned to a grandmother once and I said, oh, this wee one, she's, and she went, aye, she's been here before, Scotty, aye, aye. She's been here before. So that kind of stuff. So tell us what you think about that. What decade, Kevin? I'm quite big on the 30s because you had the radio in then and you had the telephone in then. And I would love for, um, you know, the public service broadcaster in its infancy. I don't know if, if John Reith would have let me do it, but a live phone in. I think that would have been rather good on uh, public service broadcasting in the 1930s. I would have had to talk to the head of talks I'm sure one of the head of talks was Malcolm Muggeridge. Is that true? So there we are. Um, so I think maybe the 30s, we could go um, cruising in boats. Of course, also people were starving. We had the Great Depression. We just had the general strike of 1926. So I think each decade, in answer to your question, Kevin, has pros and cons. All right, so there you are. Uh, Molly Scott is the Janice well doing. Uh, Ethel Merman is the best organist in the world, says Gordon Ritchie. Right, but you want to hear Paul Francis Carroll, Gordon Ritchie. Uh, top of the morning to you, Scotty McClure, says Hector Brown. Good morning, Mr. Brun, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, more sharing, guys. We need to all start the sharing. Big style, early doors. Uh, so there you are. We've got an hour. Uh, did you hear there's now around 1 million cases of the coronavirus worldwide? Yes, Jack, I, 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 I accept that. But we have to be very careful who has died with the coronavirus and who has died of the coronavirus or from the coronavirus. Of or from. So there we are. Uh, the Hot Sauce went through the second week of the lockdown. Many more weeks to go, many more days of watching your delightful videos. Scotty McClue, Nikki Graham, you are extremely kind. I thank you. Kevin Stewart, good morning. Kareem, Michael Clark, bonjour, Scotty. Hope you're well. We oui, miss you. Bonjour. Vous aussi. Oui, oui, d'accord. Yeah, je regrette, mais je ne parle pas. Français très vite, si tu parles lentement, peut-être je comprends, Michael. Uh, Michael. Richard Monroe is watching. Dinky do, Richard. Lovely to have you with us and a very warm welcome. Guys, I've got to do more sharing or uh, it'll be a wee. The day will be a wee. That was what my father used to say. He got up very early in the morning and he would come in to wake me about seven o'clock. He'd go, come on, you need to get up or the day will be a wee. <laughs> Loved that man, actually. Wonderful man. We got here. There we go. Now, uh, live now. I'll just send it out. Guys, can we all share? Uh, I'm not, I'm no joking, as they say in the Lang tune of Kirkcaldy. I'm no joking. Um, live now. 
join us. It's very interesting because there's no rhyme or reason to it on, on Facebook or on a lot of social media. But you can tell every day you're live and nobody turns up. Or you just pop up random and 20,000 join you. You know, so I don't know what it's to do with how much people can see things. I mean, in theory, if 2 billion could see this stream, would they come and join us? Only on a four manual, says Paul Francis Carroll. Uh, in answer to my question to the organist, the organist entertains, um, in answer to my question, Paul Francis Carla said, you can only go from um, solo to choir on a four manual organ, but you can swell to great on a three manual, Paul. Is that right? Do tell. Very, very important. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. I see. Right, here we are, guys. Okay, sharing. Sharing like mad. Have you all shared? Uh, we'll share to our group. Let everybody know what's happening. So there we are. Karen Flynn's watching. Welcome, Karen and Dinky Doo from Scotty McClue. Lovely to have you with us. Tell 10 to tell 10. Scotty McClue started the Easter holidays now. Will you be getting an Easter egg? Kareem Zachariah, I hope so. The only thing is I have to watch the dog with Easter eggs. No dog should ever have a chocolate that's not designed as dog chocolate. There's the wonderful Gordon Roddick joining us. Gordon Roddick, I haven't thanked you for your latest bout of generosity. Thank you so much. Very, very much appreciated. You are a very kind and generous man, as well as being a wonderful human being. So there we are, and a first-class newscaster and announcer, and a superb transmission controller in television. You are a great manager as well. You have many, many strings to your bow, Gordon Roddick. Uh, Dennis Hamilton, and your writing is beautiful as well. I remember seeing a lovely letter from you. Um, when I came to Scott FM, Dennis Hamilton, Dinky Doo, John Gallagher, Dinky Doo, Alan Hall is watching. Guys, if you will indulge me for just a moment, the other morning we talked about Radio Clyde in Glasgow, and um, we talked about uh, the people, the wonderful people that had started it up. Um, Alec McMillan from the Clydesdale Bank, the Chief General Manager, Bill Brown, Sir William Brown, the uh, Managing Director of Scottish Television from 1966. Um, this is now Kenneth McKellar. So there we are. Um, F. Ian Chapman. Um, all these wonderful people. There'll be, there'll be more. Too many and too numerous. But of course, the managing director who had come from Scottish Television was Jimmy Gordon. James Gordon. Lord Gordon of Strathblane. And yesterday I received the sad news that Jimmy had passed away in the Royal Infirmary in Glasgow, um, they say, from coronavirus. He was 83 or 84, I think he was 84, and uh, a marvellous, marvellous man. A very, very wise counsellor to me in the early days of my career. And, uh, and very generous with, uh, with a malt whisky as well, if you were his guest. And um, the other great thing I remember, there were so many things to remember about Jimmy, and everyone will have a Jimmy Gordon story, a lovely story, because he was a wonderful man. He didn't suffer fools gladly, but he was very kind on my part. And I think he made an exception. <laughs> and uh, the lovely thing about Jimmy, no matter how busy he was or where he was, you could ring him up night or day, and he would always ring you back right away. And I can remember ringing his PA and uh, saying who it was, and she said, oh, yes, good morning. And uh, she said, he's in London. And I said, oh, well, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll catch up when he gets back. She said, no, 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 um, uh, he'll be delighted uh, to hear from you. Um, I'll get in touch with him. He has a phone in his car. Now, this is over 30 years ago. Fantastic. You know, he has a phone in his car and um, 
with, I said, oh, well, please, you know, I don't want him to go to any bother. He was down in London. He was setting up a station called Melody Radio for the late Lord Hanson. And I think Melody Radio is now uh, part of Magic. It became Magic Radio. And uh, Jimmy was setting the station up for Lord Hanson. And he had an appointment with Lord Hanson at 11 o'clock. This would be about a quarter to 11, ring, ring. I said, hello, Jimmy Gordon, good morning. I said, oh, so lovely to hear you. And he said, and you. And we chatted away. And uh, then he said, I'm seeing Lord Hanson at 11, so I'd better go. And uh, this was him. And then another night he invited me along to Radio Clyde. He said, why don't you pop in and see me? I said, Jimmy, it would be about six-ish by the time I could get there. He went, uh, that's fine, I'll be here. Uh, pop along uh, in a taxi and I'll get you a taxi back. So there we are. Very, very generous. And uh, we sat up in his big study, his lovely big office, and um, we, uh, we, we finished off the night with a wee dram. There we are of the best stuff. And uh, I have many, many happy memories. I remember us sitting at a dinner. I uh, was appointed the managing director of the third radio station for Central Scotland. So you had Radio Clyde in the West, Radio Forth in the East, and in no man's land, Central Scotland, not particularly well served by radio. I set up Central FM. Well, it is Central FM now. It was Central Sound Radio in those days. And uh, Jimmy was very, very supportive. And um, I uh, remember we were all invited to a dinner of managing directors for the launch of the Radio Authority with um, Lord um, Charles Font, who was the chairman of the new Radio Authority. And uh, that, of course, metamorphosed into Ofcom. And uh, Jimmy and I sat together at the table in the George Hotel in Edinburgh, and a lovely, lovely night was had by all. And Lord Charles Font was absolutely charming. And these are some of the lovely ways I'd like to remember Jimmy Gordon. He was a great friend of John Smith, the politician. My mother taught John Smith. Jimmy spoke superbly at John Smith's funeral. And I dropped him a note because he mentioned the rabbit song, See the Little Rabbits All in a Row, that John Smith used to sing on the plane on the way back from London to Scotland, London to Edinburgh on a Friday night. And John would entertain them um, with uh, wonderful, wonderful songs, Gaelic songs, Calabarunsa, because John was originally from Ardrishig in Argyll. And my family were from Ardrishig in Argyll. My mother taught John. She taught him the rabbit song in Sunday school. And uh, I uh, appraised Jimmy of this and he said, this is excellent. I'll pass this on. He wrote back a lovely letter. He said, I'll pass this on to Elizabeth and the family. And of course, John Smith, the uh, wonderful labor leader who died far too young in his 50s, probably the best Prime Minister we never had. And um, I noticed Jeremy Corbyn today. Um, you know, Jimmy was at university with John Smith. They were in the debating society. And uh, Jimmy was uh, very well respected. I noticed um, that uh, Jeremy Corbyn is stepping down as Labour leader. And I said in my tweet, regardless of your politics, so I don't always see eye to eye, um, with with Jeremy Corbyn, but uh, regardless of your politics, perhaps the most popular Labour leader ever and um, a thoroughly decent human being. So there we are. So there's, uh, there's my tribute to Jimmy Gordon, uh, Lord Gordon of Strathblane sitting in the House of Lords and uh, a remarkable man, a life well lived. Thank you very much for listening to that. But I hope a lot of you knew Jimmy and, um, you know, you'll be able to uh, pay tribute to him. The sad thing is that if it was coronavirus that took him from us, coronavirus also will prevent us from commemorating and celebrating Jimmy's life. So, uh, you know, we'll not be able to go 
along uh, to that. I shouldn't think so, but there we are. Uh, we live in difficult times. That I don't think would trouble Jimmy at all. And I can remember when we first met, he wrote down a phone number and said, that's my home number. Ring me any time. So there we are. So that was Jimmy Gordon, Lord Gordon of Strathblane. May he rest in peace, requiescat in patchy, and may he rise in glory. John McNally, Dennis Hamilton, John Gallagher, welcome, welcome, welcome. Alan Hall's watching. Uh, Scotty McClure, Dinky Doo, lovely to have you all with us. Gordon Sterling, good morning, McClure. Good morning, Gordon Sterling, you Lado Pierce. Did you look up, did you look up autodidactism? Did you look that up, Gordon Sterling? Yes, I'll bet you did. Gordon Hadley, Hugh Beatty, Gordon Sterling knows about so many things, a remarkable individual. There are so many remarkable individuals. Stephen Mooney, Miller McToom, Kevin Roberts, Scotty, that has freaked me out. I was working in Bala, never been before, but felt like I knew my way round. Bala uh, in Wales. Is that right? Uh, with the lake, am I right? Have I got the right place? Um, so there we are. Yes. What have we got? Um, knew my way round. Absolutely right, Scotty. In my lifetime, I would go back to the 80s. If there was any decade, probably the 60s. Well, I would love to have, I'm not one of your old morning minutes. I would love to have another 40 years of, uh, of careering because there's so many interesting things to do. Um, I might have a crack at the law. I, I don't know about medicine. Um, I don't think I would enjoy all that surgery. I don't know that I would enjoy surgery, but I have loved the many and varied jobs I've had to date and uh, would like to keep working well into my 80s. Uh, if I survive, James McDonald, Dinky Doo, Agnes and I clapped McClue last night. Not the first time McClue has had the clap. Oh, thank you, Gordon Sterling. Let me give you the clap as well. Very, very good. So there we are. And we were very lucky where I live. Eight o'clock on the dot. Bagpipes. The whole street clapping. Wonderful. I don't know who the bagpiper was, but I sent him thanks and felicitations. John Marshall, tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. Scotty McClure is live. Dinky do. Um, Darren Stevenson, Gary Campbell, Thomas Peden's telling everybody. El Salvador, Stallione Savior. Hi, Scotty. Good morning, El Salvador. Lovely to have you with us. I was talking last night to the great Stephen Clinkscale. Uh, of Clink Scales Accordions. Wonderful. And Stephen has very kindly agreed at some point, uh, when it suits, he would Skype me and we could talk accordions. Gordon Roddick, Dinky Do, I hope you heard that wonderful tribute to you. And of course, the one to Jimmy Gordon. Uh, Gordon Robertson, Dinky Do, El Salvador, Scotty, bad night last night. 5G towers were set alight in Birmingham. And Watford, why is this happening? What's the problem with the 5G? Guys, can everybody share? And I'm serious, please. I beg of you. I am begging for a favor. Share, 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 share right now so that we can get these numbers up. What's the problem with the 5G? Is everybody doing the nut about it? Billy Hunter's watching. Dinky do, Billy Hunter. Paul Francis Carl, yes, Scotty. Divisions start with great swell, choir, solo, and ancillary. Now, what is the ancillary? Is that the pedal board? Is that the foot board? The foot pedal board. Quite tricky. Um, I do, I've got to fess up, uh, Paul. I do struggle a little bit with the feet. Uh, when I'm concentrating on everything else. I mean, playing the pipe organ is such a fabulous skill, and you are the master of it. You are maestro, maestro. But, uh, you know, to get to be reading music, 
to be uh, moving manuals down the different keyboards to be pulling out all the right stops, even with the aid of foot pistons and thumb pistons, to um, get the right sound, to get the timing right, and to get the pedals going at the same time. A fabulous piece of coordination is all I'm saying. Uh, I don't know what happened there. I tried to share it in a group and it just went off. Ah, try again, Kevin. Share with everybody. Hello, Scotty. Wednesday said, Wendy says, thank you for the anniversary message. 22 years. Derek Walker. Happy anniversary to you and Wendy. Thank you, do. Can you get the BBC to bring back Rab C on a Friday night? Says Stuart Neely. That was very popular. I can remember being in a pub in the Mary Hill Road. I just popped up for a light refreshment and um, I thought to myself, I was a student at the time, never so well off as when I was a student. And um, I remember uh, there was a big telly and Rab C. Nisbet came on, you know, and wonderful people involved in it, Gregor Fisher and what have you. And uh, Rab C. Nisbet came on and I thought, now this is going to be interesting because this guy is going to be, the audience are going to be the people a bit like Rab C. And uh, I watched it, so everybody got themselves a beer, and then we turned around to the telly and everybody laughed their head off. Uh, so there we are. Paul Smouth, El Salvador, Stallione, Saviour, wonderful, wonderful actor, Gregor Fisher. Uh, first saw the first time I saw Gregor on stage was at a funny thing happened on the way to the forum in Dundee Rep around I would think nineteen seventy eight maybe would that be right and uh, he was singing he was outstanding wonderful actor. Uh, Scotty, can I ask, have you been joining in with Mr. Motivator Workouts? I'm a little concerned these broadcasts overlap each other. Perhaps you could get together to alter the timings. Uh, wait, do we see? Uh, as it's playing havoc with my hectic schedule. Now, would it help if we had a workout on Scotty McClue Live on uh, Morning McClue? Do you like the title? Very imaginative. I'm so creative. Larry Donaldson, El Salvador Stallione. There's no better motivator than Scotty. <laughs> there you go. Brian Wynn Stanley's watching. Lovely to have you with us. Um, I like Corby. Good guy, says El Salvador. So there we are. Mark Montgomery, dinky do. Brian says, good morning, Scotty McClure. Good morning, Brian Wynn Stanley. Lovely to have you with us. More sharing, guys. More sharing, more sharing, share in a group. So what group can we share? We'll share on the Scotty McClue fan group just to get us away, get us started. Can the rest of you all do the same? Guys, we had about just under a couple of thousand of you joined me yesterday. Well done. And, um, you know, I would like to see that up, as I say, tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. I'm relying very, very heavily on all of you to keep sharing this. Uh, annoy your friends with it. Share your friends. and we you sent me this for? You know, all that stuff. Good morning, Scotty. Zaikai Tang. Good morning. Sadly, Scotty McClure, I need to go shopping now. I'll listen on Sunday night for your pop-up. What time will it be this week? Shall we just go for 8 o'clock on Sunday night, Kareem? I was doing a pop-up live on YouTube at 8, and then I was coming live here at 9, but I think 8, so there we are. Gordon Robertson, uh, dinky-doo, that was a nice tribute to Jimmy Gordon. Thank you, Gordon, it's just from the heart. He was a great guy, and he sat on so many other committees as well. Uh, he sat on the Teachers' Pay Committee, um, you know, all that stuff. Um, he represented various organizations. He was very known. He was, he was a worldwide operator, Jimmy. Great guy. Alistair King's watching, thank you, dear. Funeral's still going ahead. Uh, I'm hearing Scotty. Yes, the funerals, I think, are going ahead, but I don't think all the mourners can go. 
Uh, Gone Stirling, a fitting tribute to your friend. Well said. Very interesting. Good morning, Scotty, says Alistair King. Good morning, big man. Um, I uh, think that if Jimmy had still been at Radio Clyde, Scotty McClue may well have been on it, or back on it, as we say. I used to do the Clyde Cayley. Morning, McClure, says Davy Birrell. Good morning, Davy. Lovely to have you with us. Dinky Doo, says Alistair King. Lovely tribute, Scotty, says Kevin Roberts. Thank you, folks. He was a man well worth it. Thomas Hamilton, hello, pal. Hello, Thomas. Lovely to have you with us in Dinky Doo. Fiona Kennedy, good morning from sunny Aberdeenshire. Fiona Kennedy, one of my great heroines of music. Uh, when I did the Clyde Cayley, I took great delight in playing your songs and everybody absolutely adored them. And there we are. And I loved your mother and your father and your uncle Alistair. They came and um, had lunch with my parents when they came to Gaelic things in Greenock. So there you are. So there's a nice connection there, Fiona. And of course, I remember all your lovely sisters and your lovely mother, Anne. So dinky-doo to you. That's the Fiona Kennedy, folks. Um, dinky-doo, says Brian Wynne Stanley. John Pye's watching down in Lancashire. There we are. So we're just at Fiona in Aberdeenshire. John Pye in Lancashire. With somebody from Australia yesterday. People are watching in Canada. Yes, Scotty, Wales. Kevin Roberts, Bala in Wales. I once travelled out because there was a beautiful house for sale. And uh, a friend of mine said, well, it's beautiful, but you go out there and tell me what you think. And uh, of course it was quite far away from the Metrolops. But that's the point of it. The beautiful are not Lake Bala. Uh, I'd like to live in the 70s, 80s. Uh, unity community, not like now. The 70s and 80s, yes. The 70s, I'll tell you what we had in the 70s. The government were almost invisible. They were um, top people. You know, you had um, uh, Wilson and Healy and Heath and um, all these characters, the 60s, you had Alec Douglas, Hume, that sort of thing. But the government weren't great publicity seekers. They just kind of came and went. So you would see the odd news story of them popping in and out of number 10, getting out of the rover. Was it the P5B? These big three liter, three and a half liter rovers. Well, there were three liter then. They became the three and a half with the big Buick engine. But um, you would see the prime minister getting in and out of these. And Margaret Thatcher, I was very annoyed at her for doing so. She scrapped the rovers. Because she didn't think, I think she thought there was a risk that um, somebody might see more than the bargain for when she was getting in and out the back of them. But, I mean, I can't see anybody being particularly bothered uh, about any of that, uh, although she obviously was. And we lost the rovers. And now I see the politicians' cars, nice big shiny motors, but the style of these rovers was something else. But you didn't in the 70s. The government weren't pushing for publicity in the way that they tend to do now. Parties trying to outdo each other for time on the telly. Uh, what's your favourite Easter egg, says Thomas Beden? Oh, I would never be so base as to advertise, Thomas. But I think that, um, I think that, uh, yes, I like the one with the buttons in it. I have to say, a wee bit partial, but I can't. Take too much. A half Easter egg does me duty. Uh, keep the buttons for the next day, but do be careful the dog doesn't get them. A lawyer woke up in the hospital after surgery, asked, why are all the blinds drawn? The nurse answered, there's a fire across the street, and we didn't want you to think the operation had been a failure. Oh, dear, dear. Hey, Scotty, this is Chris Clark. Lockdown, it's like a look into future retirement. I don't think I want to retire, Scotty. I would develop an OCD for polishing the car. Well, the only thing is I will not retire because I have no interest in that. 
um, and I do so many interesting things during the day. I have one of the most wonderful jobs uh, on the planet. So there you are. Um, in addition to all my broadcasting work, and uh, I would be in no rush to give that up. Uh, so there you go. And also, there's so much to do. I mean, I've got a, a half-written book, which is, funnily enough, also half-unwritten, a thriller. So I must get on with that. Uh, it's Chris Fee Carlyle here, shared Chris Clark. We love Carlyle. I used to work in Carlyle Border Television. That was your local television station. Wonderful, wonderful station. Um, and, of course, it owned radio stations as well, and I got to work for them as well. And uh, I'm thinking Warwick Road. Do you know the Warwick Road? I always worry for Carlisle because it floods, and it's always flooded. And I know there are new flood defences, but I'm always fingers crossed for Carlisle and all our other beautiful places that sadly get flooded. Get the rivers cleared out. That's the answer for starters. Morning, Scotty from Karen and Liz, out working hard, dinky-doo. Karen, dinky-doo, bless you and Liz. Thank you for all your hard work. Do your research on 5G, says Channel Z Diver. Well, I will do channels. Um, it's not something I know a lot about. But, um, you know, you could let something slip because, you know, my clue's always maxed. I'm a very, very busy man. And I don't always have time to research everything. Uh, Michael Carbon says, please explain this. Oh, sorry, Michelle, Michelle Carbon or Carboni, please explain this. What are we explaining? People think 5G is killing people because of the frequency, says Kevin Roberts. Ah, well, with frequencies, we do have to be careful. I mean, I can remember a top, top, top engineer the equivalent of an engineering admiral in radio. And he said to me, if you're ever climbing a mast, obviously the power's either switched off or very reduced. But if you're ever climbing a mast and you start to feel warm, get down, because you're actually cooking from the inside. You could microwave yourself. So we don't want that. Uh, so very interesting, because we have a lot of microwave links um, but we shall see what is what. What I would say to people is when you're using telephones, do be careful, because if you've got a phone to your ear all the time, then um, you've got a, a, a radio transmitter just beside your brain. A lot of people put their phones in a top pocket here on the left-hand side. If you're doing that, you've got a powerful radio transmitter just beside your heart which runs on uh, electricity and electrical uh, frequency, tenth of a volt, I think it is, the heart. Uh, they want to bolt it to frequency 60 gigahertz. Isn't good for human consumption. Let's say, Scotty, we need a no policy like Russia, Switzerland, and Denmark. Well, to what, ex what are the advantages of 5G? That's what we need to find out. And then what are the dis advantages you know that would be the idea and then we could draw up a list so there we are draw up a list called the duke of wellington clause the pros and cons so there we are i can remember a friend of mine who was a social worker and did a lot of work in prisons and also in um houses of of uh, ill repute you know, and um, I remember when he was saying about the advantages and disadvantages of his career. So we drew him up a list of pros and cons. Um, just on a big bowl of porridge, do you prefer porridge made from oatmeal or porridge oats? Ooh, you've got me there. Also with sugar or salt. So what's the difference between porridge, oats, and oatmeal, Gordon Robertson. Now, you will have to spill big time. So there we are. Fantastic. Dinky-doo, how are you? Guys, can we all have a share again? I want the numbers up, 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 up. And I forgot to share myself. Here we go. Get sharing in a group. Uh, Scotty McClure fans. 
Get sharing right now. Come on, guys, get sharing. Share, share, share. There we go. And uh, I'll put Scott A. McClure. This is a fan group, guys, we want to join. There's about 3,000 of you on it. That'd be fantastic. And also, I have a huge backlog of people wanting to befriend this page. Can you follow this page, everybody? Get that sorted for now. I'll just flick this over and um, hope that everybody sees it. But we need to get sharing and sharing and sharing. I agree. Things have changed since the 80s. Tech has killed community. Michael McCulloch, you tell it like it is. Pity my organ playing was barely adequate. St. Margaret's Aberdeen, Michael McCulloch. Your, outs, uh, your organ playing would be outstanding, so let's have less of it. There you are. I do not have top creative people who play the organ. St. Margaret's Aberdeen would benefit immensely from, uh, from Michael McCulloch's playing. 5G is no more than radiation than a radio. It's not until ionization that it becomes dangerous. And that's up a gamma ray levels. 5G is nowhere near it. So there's Grant telling us we need not worry. Morning from Italy. Dinky do willy. Morober. I say, see. Si. Good morning. Lovely to have you with us. Scusi. Scusi, uh, and uh, scusi, we're not speaking fluent Italian. I can just talk, I could talk to you in music, I should say. It's lovely to have you. Bravo, bravo, bravissimo, bella, bella, ah, uh, andante, andante, yes, uh, allegro, allegro, allegretto. Gregor Fisher used to be a regular at Langham Common Riding. He used to often go to the event with the guy who played uh, Grouty from Porridge. Ah, now, Grouty. Was Grouty the big guy? Uh, I'll tell you who that was. Wonderful. Grouty. I'm just hoping I've got the right one. Yes, yes, Gregor's marvellous because Gregor Fisher and I, if I remember, he was a fisherman. And... We shared a love of the Riverside Inn at Cannonbay in Dumfrieshire. Would that be right? The most gorgeous, gorgeous little inn. I'm so sorry for these places at the moment with the lockdown. There's nothing can be done but the Riverside Inn at Cannonbay. Cannonbay is a village in southwest Scotland, right at a bend on the River Esk. And to me, it is the most gorgeous village. I remember looking at a lovely big house in Cannonbay. And uh, it was a dear friend of mine in television that actually bought it. So there we are. Wonderful stuff. It needed quite a lot of work, and I think she did it up. Uh, the lovely Linda Rifkin's watching. Dinky do, Linda. Lovely to have you with us. Alistair King. Scotty, the problem with the 5G, it's emitting high levels of radiation. That's why people such as a problem with it. Well, there was the other gentleman telling us it's no more than a radio. So there we are. And we've got the old Wi-Fi in the house. Wish my bonnet looked as good as yours. Ah, Michael McCullough, come on now. There we are. Uh, eight, it is Scotty McClure. Have a good day and stay safe. The lovely Kareem Zachariah, what a top man. Dave Anderson's watching Dinky Doo. Is that the Dave Anderson? What a fine fellow. So there we are. Um, Radio Clyde isn't what it used to be. It's all syndicated shows now. Oh, Gordon Robertson. Radio Clyde was the absolute beacon of independent local radio. It was launched on Hogman A., um, New Year's Eve in 1973 with a host of stars on it. All its DJs became famous. You had fabulous people like uh, Tony Curry, Paul Coya, Doogie Donnelly, Bill Smith, Tiger Tim, 
Um, you had all these, oh, the too many, too numerous to name. Alex Dixon was the head of news, and I was chuffed a bit. So when Alex came up to me, I was in Radio Clyde one day, and he was doing a, a book program latterly, and uh, Alex is sadly no longer with us, and he was doing a book program, and he came over, and I said, oh, sorry, am I in your seat? And he said, not at all, and he, he shook my hand. First, I didn't realize it was Alex, he just... He just came over uh, and, and was picking some books up. And I said, oh, sorry, I'm angry. And uh, um, he said, uh, no, not at all. Uh, son, I love what you do. It's fantastic. <laughs> so there you are. And that was the programmer at Radio Clyde when Jimmy Gordon was the managing director. Um, Kevin Roberts, if funerals can't be attended, should there be virtual funerals? If people paid their respects like Scotty just did, is a great way to pay respect. Yes, you could have the pastor or somebody like myself as a, a celebrant and they could take all the messages of condolences and have a discussion about the deceased. And you could also have, I mean, because there's so few people at the graveside, if it's a burial, or I don't know if you're allowed, um, people at the crematorium, um, but it's filming the situation as well. But last night I saw a rabbi had passed away and they were um, filming just from the graveside and the rabbi taking the funeral was in touch with the family. Um, so there you are. But really, to be honest, guys, um, from my own point of view personally, um, you know, if you think, if, if Scotty McClue, when Scotty McClue goes, there'll either be a big outcry or nobody will bother. It doesn't really matter one way or the other. I remember somebody saying, don't worry about being too popular in life as the crowd at your funeral is largely determined by the weather. <laughs> Not true in the case of my dear late father. About this time of year, mid-March, the 13th of March, uh, the funeral would be about the 15th of March, and it was a church funeral, and it was a bucketing wet Friday night at 7 o'clock, and the church was packed. So there you are. And that was my father. Just a great guy. Uh, Steve Wilkie's watching Richie McCusker, Kevin Stewart. I remember Mike Yarwood as Harold Wilson and Edward Heath, Janet Brown as Margaret Thatcher. 80s comedy magic. They were outstanding. And I was sorry to hear of Eddie Large passing away yesterday of Little and Large. And I remember uh, they used to play Blackpool and uh, Sid, Sid Little would very kindly ring me on the phone in. And I can remember Rod Hardesty, the phone op, saying, uh, I've got Sid on the phone for you, Sid's next. It's Sid Little. And I said, are you winding me up? He went, no, 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 he, he listens. So there we are. So, and Sid used to ring us up for a chat on Red Rose Gold because uh, that was the radio station for Blackpool. Uh, Alistair King, dig out the old uh, FJ 200 motorcycle yesterday from the back of the garage, Scotty. It really surprised me. New fuel pump, petrol and battery, and she fired up first ton after six years gathering dust. So she's going back on the road. Wonderful. But you see, that's not an old motorcycle. When I was wee... Um, I remember somebody offering me for sale. I had a rally runabout moped, right? Six quid it rushed me, and I had a rally runabout moped. Fantastic. And then I uh, had a Puch, Puch Maxi moped. There we are. And uh, you had to get the parts from BMW garages. And uh, I was offered for sale a 1957 Sunbeam. Whoa, what a giant of a thing that was. And it would fire up right away. There were, uh, my friend had a BSA 250, a C15 Starfire. So there we are. Um, my great uncle sadly was killed 
They were under a bus in uh, Douglas with a square tank. Uh, so they are the late Uncle Harry, Harry C. Downey, H. C. Downey. And um, what else did we have? There was one called an Indian. There was a Velo set. There was AJS. There was Matchless. There was the BSA Bantams that the Telegraph Boys used. Fantastic. So there you are. Tony Max watching. Morning, Scotty. Morning, Tony. Spot on, Scotty. People don't get old, then retire. They get old because they retire. Well, when my father was thinking and retiring, I mean, he was very busy at his Scottish fiddle music and his garden and um, both metal work and joinery work. And people in the community, the day my father died, um, he was revarnishing a board for the church that had the minister's name on it and everything. And he was uh, doing a wonderful job revarnishing the board. Moira Chico's mum's watching. Kevin Stewart and my father, he called in to the doctor because he wasn't feeling very well in the morning. He called in to the doctor and the doctor said, oh, yes, um, yes, I could admit to you. And my father said, no, no need for that. The enzymes in the liver aren't working anymore. I'm going home to thin my tomato seeds. And he had a lovely lunch, thinned his tomato seeds, and uh, went up for a lie down and hit the deck, and that was it, out like a light bulb. My dogs bark so low frequency, I can barely hear it. That's the last time I'll adopt a subwoofer. Kevin Stewart, there used to be a duo called... Um, oh, there we are. A wonderful duo that used to do a show called At the Drop of a Hat. So Flanders and Swan were the duo. Michael Flanders and Donald Swan, sadly no with us. Michael Flanders, a fantastic actor and wordsmith. Donald Swan, a fantastic pianist, whose hobby was going to the laundrette. Oh, Donald Swan, Flanders and Swan, and they had shows running in London in the 50s and 60s called At the Drop of a Hat and At the Drop of Another Hat, and their uh, music was just great fun stuff. The Gnu song, um, that sort of stuff, the Hippopotamus song, all these wonderful things. Song of the Reproduction was one of them. And who made the circuit up for you? You bought it in a shop. Ooh, what a terrible job. You've got your push me to, you coupled up to your, oh, I can't remember all the lyrics, but it was fantastic. Uh, Molly Scott, had a coffee and a wafer. Colin Coco Stewart's watching Dinky Doo. Colin Coco Stewart. Kevin Stewart, did you used to go to the Willow Pool near Cannon Bay well, on the river? It's fantastic. I used to go for a walk up by Bayer Bonn Foot House and up through the Bayer Bonn. Um, wonderful. And you could see the old railway. Because when I was little, you could travel anywhere on the railways and there was a station within yards from your house, no matter where you stayed. So there you are. <clears throat> and there was a station. And you could get train. There were branch lines. And you could go to the borders. So instead of a rushed car journey, you went to uh, Glasgow Central Station, Glasgow St. Enoch, I think, took you to the borders as well. That was the one. Buchanan Street, all these different stations in the town. Edinburgh Waverley, Edinburgh Hay Market. There would be many more Edinburgh stations, I'll bet you. And uh, I can remember at uh, Joppa. Uh, had they closed the station at Joppa? Can't remember, but there were all these uh, these things. Some of them that closed in 1939. Ha ha! Your Italian is dreadful, Scotty. Please renounce. Bravo, bravo, bravissimo. La dolce vita. So there we are. Wonderful. I hope these better. Scusi, scusi, Moro. Scusi, Moro. I think uh, LBC was the first local radio station in the UK. Then Capital, and then Radio Clyde. Just check if I'm right. Uh, you're probably right, Tony Mac. Yes, um, LBC Crown Communications. I remember that. And um, then we had uh, 
Capital Radio. Now, Capital Radio struggled a little bit when they were setting it up. And the wonderful Richard Attenborough, Dickie Attenborough, the actor, was the chairman, Sir Richard Attenborough, David Attenborough's brother. And um, the bank manager called him in and he said, you have to do with Capital Radio? I said, yes, the chairman. He said, I'm not really prepared to lend any more money to them at the moment. Um, you know, because it was all a bit of a wing and a prayer. Still can be in independent radio. And um, Richard Attenborough said, I don't have any security. I'm not prepared to lend without security. And Richard Attenborough popped out, popped back to the bank and brought one of his paintings, which was worth an absolute fortune, and uh, said to the bank manager, would this suffice as security? The bank manager saw what it was, what it was worth. His face broke into a smile and he said to Richard, I don't, he said to Dickie, I don't need your painting. The money is there. And that was the start of Capital Radio. Fantastic. So there you go. And I actually had bigger nighttime figures than Capital Radio. I remember looking it up. And the lovable last of the big switchboard said to me, I said, I can't believe that. My figures are higher than Capital Radio in London. And she said, um, well, stop bloating. And I said, well, I, I can't. <laughs> Great fun. Uh, Craig Arthur, hi, Scotty. Can we see, um, says, what was that one? Oh, got that one. There we go. And have a look at that. Uh, what did the grape say when the elephant stepped in it? Nothing. It just let out a little wine. Jack, good one. Joke of the day. I say we love that. Dave Nichols is watching. Dinky do, Dave. Lovely to have you with us. Top pair uh, broadcasting man there, chairman of a radio station. Lovely to have you with us. I have a Norton Commando in my collection and a Bantam now. The Norton Commando... Alistair King, am I right in saying, was a 500? Yes, is that right? And was it a twin? 500 twin, the Norton Commander, Norton Motorcycles. Fantastic. Triumph, another great motorcycle. The Tiger, there we are. Um, I have a, a Bantam now. Do you have a Bantam 125? or a Bantam 175. Used to be able to pick them up secondhand from the post office. And the telegraph boys you'd see going past you, nah, 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 because I think the Bantam was two-stroke. So you get that nah, 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 of the two-stroke. Would that be right, Alistair? The 125 and the 175. A friend of mine has a Rudge. Yes, a Rudge motorcycle, a great old classic, the Rudge. Fantastic. There we go. Remember Topping and Swan. Yes, Swan Michael Topping and Donald Swan. There we are. And um, also Sidney Carter with Lord of the Dance. Sidney Carter did a lot of uh, work with Donald Swan after Michael Flanders passed away. Michael had had, I think it was polio, and Michael was in a wheelchair, um, and uh, he would uh, wheel himself on stage uh, with a, a tartan travelling rug over his knees, and uh, they would uh, start on their comedy act. Very, very clever, very, very funny, still is. Uh, Waverley Line Branch uh, from Longtown Junction to Cannon Bay. Wow, Kevin Stewart, you are a big fount of knowledge. Clever, clever man. Thank you for the best out of the day, says the lovely Susan Forrest in a kiss. Not at all, Susan. I have to go. Yup, Jop on Portobello Stations, closed mid to late 60s. I used to live there as a kid. View of Portobello Station in Brighton Place. I know Brighton Place. Old Georgian houses. Beautiful. Guys, I've got to dash. What a fantastic program today. Take great care of yourselves. From me, Scotty McClue, to every single one of you. Dinky-doo. Stay fabulous.